What's going on guys, it's T90 and welcome back. Uh, this is a special, special 1v1 game featuring the Tatars, one of my favorite civilizations right now, and also one of my favorite sauces. Now, if that joke hasn't made you leave the game yet, then congratulations, because this is going to be quite an interesting one. Uh, MBL is playing as the Tatars in the red, and then Hera, I'm sure you've all heard about him by now, he's playing as the Persians in blue. Now, uh, this is a ranked game, and I'm going to talk about the sieves, I'm going to talk about the maps and everything. But there's one thing in particular which has kind of bothered me uh, with DE and ranked games. And it's that the old way of doing things before DE was to do random civilizations. So you do whatever map, normally it was Arabia back then, and random civilizations. And it would feature civilizations that you otherwise wouldn't see frequently if a pro player is tryharding or if anyone really wants to get a win, right? And so, I don't know if it's because certain people like to try hard. They always want to have, like, the same civilization on each map. Or, like, a selection of, like, six or seven. Or if it's because there's no way of seeing your opponent is going random. Well, whatever the reason is, I really miss unique Civ matchups. And so, MBL picking Tatars here, and I believe he, he picked some other civilizations too. I have a bunch of rags from him. It just makes it interesting for me. Whereas Persians, Persians is a Civ you saw all throughout Hidden Cup. Persians is a civilization that's one of the best hybrid civs, so uh, even a civ where there's not just land, there's strong. And so, I'm not sick of Persians, I'm just saying we know the potential of Persians, right? So, Hera went Persians, he's on this side, and MBL's gone for Tatars, uh, which were recently updated. You probably saw videos about the Flaming Camel. It's unlikely that in a competitive match you're going to see Flaming Camels in 1v1s, but they have them. Now, uh, the Tatars get Thumb Ring for free. So Thumb Ring is a huge upgrade for Cav Archers, and they've always had decent Cav Archers. Um, it's just they, they've had no discount on creating them. Now you can justify going for the Cav Archers. Totars also do more damage when on fighting on top of hills. That's always a bonus they've had. But now that the Acropolis has been added into the mix, it kind of makes sense here that they when they have the hill. And then there's the Keshik, which is a really cool unique unit. Uh, it's actually not too expensive, and you actually earn gold when you fight with it. And there's, there's some other things, like the step lands are even, not just for Tatars, but for all civs that get them. That was buffed a little bit. So MBL decided to mess around with the Tatars. Now, the focus on Acropolis is always about expansion. Yes, when you have your hill, it's easier to defend, but there's not a lot of wood lines up here. And the, you'll see Hera and MBL have already placed their lumber camp at the bottom of the hill, which means you're really far away from your base, which means you're really exposed. So you see a lot of fighting over that, and then you see a lot of fighting over gold piles as well. And I have to say, uh, this isn't really even a DE thing. Acropolis has always been one of the more difficult maps to balance gold piles on. And you look at Hera, for example. Hera has his 7-tile gold, and then his 4-tile gold. Well, it's got to be out here somewhere. It's actually down here. So I'd say it's right in between where uh, his TC and MBL's town center is, which is pretty unfortunate. Now, MBL, he has this gold. It's definitely better. I mean, I'm sure Hera would wish he had a gold here. Uh, and then apart from that, you're going to see these two golds on the left side. Again, further away from Hera, but at least this one and this one are within reach for him. And you also have to consider uh, yeah, Persians, they don't really need as much gold as Tatars, right? Because they have, they have fully upgraded Hussars. They also get the Persian trash bows, so you can uh, get the commander on upgrade in your castle and just spam crossbows all day which can be particularly strong. Not to mention, even in Dark Age, because their TCs work so fast, uh, basically Persians are better in every way economically right now, uh, because they their town center works 5% faster in Dark Age, 10% faster in Feudal, and it just oh, keeps yeah. climbing throughout the game. So uh, I was watching MBL's stream during this, and I think a big reason that MBL picked Tatars was because of the Cav Archers. I've been seeing a lot of pros go... Like scouts into cab archers or something. Um, however, you can you start off with a game plan in any Age of Empires 2 game, and then from there you have to adapt. And the adapting is probably the hardest thing. Now, most people out there can't even get a solid Dark Age down. Even a clean, perfect build order is is just for the top couple hundred in the world. It's it's not easy. But after that Dark Age, there's no I hope a lot of people realize this. You can't plan for what's going to happen. It, it always depends, right? If you get attacked by scouts, you need to make spears. And if this happens, that happens. And that's just how Age of Empires 2 goes. 
So it looks to me like he might start off with some scouts. Um, Hera, he's on his way. Now what's, what's cool about Hera is that he has uh, two more vills now. But since that Feudal Age upgrade comes in faster for him because of the TC speed, it's going to be like he's only one vill ahead in terms of time. Just sick, sick, sick what Persians can do. On top of starting with more food and more wood. And you can see the resources floating for Hera too. He has no shortage of resources. Now, MBL does hit Feudal faster. He also gets a downhill hit. He gets a few really solid hits here, and I don't think Hera expected MBL to be in Feudal Age that quickly. And these are the small things. I talked to Dave about it offline when we were playing some games. In 2020, pros get so much more value. Uh, Hera? Oh, he tried to go for the trap. Uh-oh. <laughs> MBL's like, do I take the scout? <laughs> because if I if I take the scout, I might get trapped myself. That was kind of funny. Oh, yeah, pros get so much value from just one unit. There's so many times where we talk about someone losing the starting scout and how much big of a difference that makes. MBL sees it's a stable for Hera, so he won't be surprised too much. It's actually really bad for Hera if he doesn't get scouting info on this map. Like, he, he stayed at home for a while and pushed a lot of deer. Adding a lot of farms, his eco is good, but imagine if the scout or his future scouts don't get a lot of scouting. MBL's added some houses and barracks to the sides of his woodline. This is exactly what Hera's done as well. You actually can't wall on this downhill terrain, so it, you try and wall where you can and place buildings where you can. Okay. Hera sees the gold there. That's nice. He sees the deer. He sees MBL hasn't pushed quite as many. I didn't pay too much attention to how many deer MBL pushed, but I should have mentioned that the other bonus for the Tatars... Come on, Hera. Okay, I thought he was going to lose the scout there. Is that their sheep have more food. That is a dangerous place to be with the scout, let me tell you. <laughs> that is a dangerous spot. One hit from a villager, one hit from a scout, and that scout is dead. I imagine it's going to die at some point. Uh, MBL is going to catch it, so Hera's trying to scout as much as he can before it goes down. Hasn't seen any golds over here. Has not scouted the right side of his base for even the stones there. If you haven't figured it out already, as Hera loses his scout, big thing for Hera is going to be expanding. It's always expanding on this map for any player. His eco is looking really good, though. 17 on food at the moment, whereas it's just 12 for MBL, and MBL is walling as much as he can. Again, you can't wall on the stone terrain, so he's walling this way. But can MBL get to the strength of the Tatars? They have high Pierce Armor Hussars. You get to that if you uh, research Silk Armor. That also applies to the Cav Archers. They have the Keshik. Pretty passive game. I guess MBL just doesn't want to be called out. He doesn't want to be surprised. Has the Spears patrol or Spear, sorry, patrolling on the hill. But not too much has happened yet. Could possibly snipe a villager here. Depends how quickly <laughs> Hera reacts and Hera reacted. I mean, the scout's kind of weak, but that's funny. That might actually draw Hera's three scouts back. And now MBL can think he could send the rest forward if he sees Hera arrive. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I believe MBL's scout will go down and the KD will be one-to-one. -one. There you have it. So guys, I want to say in the mid-game here, uh, you know, I I've been making a lot of content recently. And I'm shifting back to doing some more YouTube-only things. So, um, you know, things are always all over the place with YouTube, right? And I don't know if it's because of the algorithm or what. But channels going going places and doing really well. But it does mean a lot when I do YouTube-only content. Um, if there's more activity in the comment section, like more people saying they appreciated it, or just a conversation about the game itself, because the whole point about doing YouTube-only content is to have more time to discuss the matchup and the, the game. So, uh, like recently, there's, there's been more activity, more likes, more comments on these types of videos. So, I just want to say thanks for that. Especially right now, because life's kind of crazy, right? Uh, I had a guy stop by to my stream. Hera needs to be careful here. MBO could get some damage in. There, there's a hole there, Hera. Okay, nice wall. Really nice wall. But anyways, life's been kind of crazy, and there's this guy who commented in my stream chat while I was offline... And uh, I'm not going to say his name or anything, but uh, basically he was he said he was very appreciative because life is crazy right now. And it means a lot to me, too, guys, because for me, I, uh, you know, I get to interact with people and it means it, it makes my work bigger than Age of Empires. And man, MBL's micro is really good. 
Ends up being close-ish. Did I totally misjudge that one? It looks like I did. Maybe MBL thought the same thing as me. Yeah, Hera, I mean, they both have one scout remaining, but Hera ends up having more HP. That was a bit weird. I totally expected as MBL now loses that scout. I totally expected after the way that fight started that Hera would end up losing his scout. The thing about Hera with scout fighting, man, it's... If the guy's committing to a fight, you have to trust him. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I just kind of want to say thanks. And, um, you know... Oh, check this out! Check this out, guys! We'll go back to the game now. So Hera is fully expecting the Cav Archer switch. Check this out. Fully expecting the Cav Archer switch. He only sees the stable from MBL. He's looking around. He's like, okay, is the guy going Cav Archers? I don't see an archery range. Where is it? Where is it? Look what he's making. He's making skirms. And MBL, he's basically saying, well, guess what, Hera? Cav Archers are not the only thing that you can go after scouts with Tatars. Tatars have more options now. Now, this was a week into the update, a week and a half into the update. I don't even know how long it's been at this point. But Hera's making a switch into skirmishers. And there won't be any archers. Okay, and now I think he realizes, oh shoot. Because if he's paying attention, he sees the mining camp. I guess that's the beauty in playing a sieve where the meta is not known, right? Because now Hera has to change his whole game plan. And he's committed over 300 wood into two archer ranges. And now he's going to make archers with his skirms, but... If he would have just switched into crossbows, switched into archers, you, you could actually do something against MBL in early castle. MBL could make one knight to counter what Hera's making out of those ranges. But yeah, isn't that... Like, this comes back to my point at the start of the game. I I love... I, and I'm okay with big tournaments having the same civilization because you want players to prepare and you want players to play the best of their ability and as strong as humanly possible. However, as MBL just now builds a blacksmith, which is pretty funny. Um, and MBL even sees skirms there, so he's probably saying, oh boy, this is great. He thought I was going CA. I just love... I miss random sieves. I, I played a game the other day which was Portuguese versus Byzantines because my buddy Scotty and I... Uh, Scotty's, uh, I think he's like 70th or 80th and he's from the States. Um, we wanted to play random Civ Arabia again because we missed it so much. Now granted, like, what I like is very different from what others like and so you guys might not agree here, but... That to be like, oh, look at the splits from MBL, doink! I don't know, I think it's a little bit too fancy. Do you really need to kill skirms? But I just, I just miss certain civilizations matching up against each other. I, I've given my feedback to uh, the devs. I'd like to see it. If we're not going to have an Arabia queue, which I really miss as well, I'd really like to just have uh, the ability to go random civ and see if your opponent has gone random civ. So MBL is going for the Keshik. We're going to stop this for just a moment. Um, I need to pull up the tech tree. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, check this out for a moment. We'll go over to the Keshik. I want to talk about the unit before we see it. Because you might have been expecting Flaming Camels. And you might have been expecting Cav Archers. And just like Hera, right? And uh, instead we're seeing Keshik. So if you look at the stats. Look at the HP. It's 110. That means with Bloodlines it's 130. Which is 10 HP better than a Knight with Bloodlines. Um, however, the base attack is worse, so you see only 9 attack, and I think base attack for a knight is 10. So, pretty close in general. Um, the unit, though, only costs 50 food and 40 gold, which means it's really solid cost-wise and HP-wise as well. Uh, whereas if you look at a knight, a knight's looking at 60 food and 75 gold. So yes, you have to make a castle to create these, and that does set your economy way behind, but it's a decent unit. And you earn gold. You generate gold when you're fighting other units. Uh, we'll talk more about the armor. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. These things are slightly worse against archers, I believe. Uh, that is before all the upgrades come in. So MBL has scouted this gold way over here in the corner. And he's placing a town center on the gold. Now, what's funny is... You look at this gold and you think, wow, Hera is at a huge disadvantage with golds. Well, MBL hasn't scouted that gold. This four tile and this four tile are extras. They're, they're essentially neutrals. You know, I think we can all agree there should be more golds in this map. <laughs> like, add two more golds and I think the map is fine. But, um, but MBL's not even taking advantage of the gold that is his. 
He's gone all the way over to this corner, and now he's going to take the extra stone, too. Now you look at Heron, what he can see as far as gold's concerned. He sees this one. Now he's probably thinking that's MBL's. I don't even know who this gold is supposed to... Like, whose gold that is. And Hera is scouting with skirmishers. And uh, he will... Oh my goodness, Hera! He didn't even see this gold yet. Oof. Well, that's rough then. I mean, the guy's making crossbows, which costs gold. He has a lot of gold right now, but he has to think long term. I think the play when you are, when you don't have a gold, is either commit and town center it early, or you need to go two TC aggression. And here come those beautiful, beautiful Keshik. Now, only two Pierce armor. Only two Pierce armor, but 130 HP. Feel like you're. I feel like they can engage versus crossbows. I'm really surprised that Hera went into crossbows. But as MBL splits and dances, the reason he went ranged units in the first place is because he expected one thing from MBL. And MBL said, surprise, Keshiks are actually decent. Oh, wow, this is beautiful. Okay. So there's some spears in here. Spears are doing all right to contribute to this fight. And then there's scorpions behind, and MBL pulls the weak Keshik back and mops up the spearman. That was really well played. Also, he dove in here and he sniped a monk from Hera. And Hera's been working on getting relics already. But Hera's gotta be a bit blindsided by all of this. You commit to two ranges at the high level, you have to continue to produce from them. And now Scorpion and Keshik is looking really strong. Now, Hera, uh, I guess was running over here. Oh, he wanted to town center this gold? Because he hadn't scouted this. <laughs> and he doesn't see MBL has a town center. How does he not see that? Come on, DE. Just Age of Empires things. 68 villagers versus 55. Persian Eco's insane. Hera has so much more economy. In terms of numbers. And Hera, uh, was, I guess, wasn't paying attention. Didn't realize what was happening there. Uh, speaking of not paying attention, I think MBL just reacted to the town center. 300 IQ TC. Okay, and now MBL's even building a castle here to secure the gold, and Hera bails. Still has his main gold. Remember, it's 800 gold a tile, and there's seven tiles there, so that's a lot of gold. Certainly enough to last up until now. now Hera will have uh, two relics minimum. I don't know if he has a third on the way back. I don't even know what the relic generation is on Acropolis. I wasn't paying too close attention. Is there four of them? Oh, no. There's another one over here. Okay, so Hera could end up with three. But he has not scouted that yet. I mean, the scouting for Hera just... It was lacking in terms of seeing what MBL was going to go for. That is for sure. This, you could say, it happens. It's a bit unfortunate, but... He could have built a town center here a long time ago. He could have had it up five minutes ago. And he has 12 more villagers. And say what you want about the Keshiks. They took one engagement, but apart from that, we haven't seen too much yet. The players are just booming. And you see Hera's resources climbing. He has more on food. His TCs are working faster, pumping out more and more villagers, extending that lead. And if, if you're up against a sieve like Persians, which is a top five sieve for sure... You need to take map control before that economy really kicks into high gear. That's why I like random civilization. That's why I like... I like it when sometimes one person has the better civ. In this case, Hera chose Persians, but... Because then you talk about what you need to do to have a chance. What you need to do to win the game. Now, if MBL has thought about it, he'll say, okay, there's a gold here. I have this gold. And if I protect this gold and maybe this stone... I'll have an advantage. What's really funny is he still doesn't see this four tile of gold, so that might as well not even exist. Talk about sloppy. I guess it happened to both players. Hera just ended up finding his. <laughs> if I'm Hera, uh, what I would probably do is go to the Imperial Age and go for Commander on Crossbows, uh, and I would also go Hussar. And then the rest of your gold, I would put into Siege, most likely. Or maybe Heavy Camel or Cavalier. I actually don't know how Camels perform against these Keshiks. See, a Knight would have four Pierce Armor. 
Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Wait a second, did my brain just confuse Pierce Armor and Melee? It's one of those things that I know. <laughs> I swear to God, I know, but I, I don't know if it's because of the coffee I just drank or what, but I'm, I'm suddenly not believing myself. Look at that, Hera's on the way to the Imperial Age, MBL's running up the hill. Now some of the units will fight with that, that hill bonus, and Hera, with all of this extra economy, is getting flattened by the Keshiks. It's a beautiful way to play it. It's a beautiful way to play it. Pack a real punch, go for a huge push, and then go to the Imperial Age behind it. Perfect from MBL. It's funny, I actually have a stream in 10 minutes, and I think I'm going to be late because I'm recording this. I wanted to get this up to YouTube this week, so I was a bit delayed. I've try been trying to exercise during this quarantine. Ugh. The worst. Wow, that, that was good from MBL. He killed 10 villagers and he idled about 20. Uh, Hera is prepping pikemen, so he wants to go towards Halbadir. He's, he's prepping trash options and adding even another town center. I would say one of Hera's greatest strengths is post-imperial now and, and expanding farms. It just When you watch a Hera game, watch how many farms he has. There he had a bunch of idols, but... Like, it is not uncommon to see him get to upwards of 50, 60, 70 farms in games. Regardless of Sif. Regardless of Sif. He's, he's really good at expanding that. I think that's where... You obviously see Harris Speed come into play in the fights. He's, he's probably the fastest player in the game right now. Like, he, Viper, Leary. But, uh... His speed comes into play with expanding Eco. Which is, I think, like a lot of other fast players out there... They use that speed more for the, the uh, aggression. Whereas he actually uses it for his Eco as well now, which... Is why I'd say he's number two right now. I don't think there's any dispute, at least based on tournament results. But how good were the last couple minutes for MBL? He tied it up in terms of population. Um, he, if he takes this gold, will have more gold available. And now he's going to switch into Cav Archers. So I just, I think it's beautiful how, okay, Hera made a militia. <laughs> um, I think it's beautiful how MBL said... Okay, you're expecting Cav Archers. I'm going to go Keshix. And that's what happened in Early Castle. And now he said, oh, you're expecting more Keshix. Well, I'm going to make CA now. So he's going to make those Archers against the Halves. Now, Hera has not been to MBL's base in a while. But he does have that outpost here, which tells him the Cav Archer switch is coming. Now, I kind of like this. I mean, I can always play devil's advocate to any decision, but I kind of like this. Hera has, has really done well weathering the storm, as I say. Um, he converted quite a few Keshiks. He's prepping Halbs. In fact, that's the first thing he's really committed to is the Pointy Boys. So I like the fact that MBL's decided to do this. MBL has three relics? Wait, there's six relics on this map? That's weird. Okay, so Hera doesn't see that relic, but it could be 3-3. Three to three. I, Normally, there's 5. What Hera didn't have is a castle, so if Hera gets a castle up, then he can research Commander on and start making some, some of those crossbows. But I think now, at this point, the Keshiks, yeah, you're, you're generating a little bit of gold when you attack, but they're just getting mopped up by the Helves. Has a lot to do with the fact they're not elite, has a lot to do with the fact that Plate Barding isn't in yet. But it hasn't been the best of fights for MBL. But he does have a lot of that map, right? Alright, Hera's building a castle. Now that castle's definitely going up, and Hera converted more Keshiks. The Cav Archers are not their strongest yet. These Cav Archers need to back up. And Hera now... Hera realizes the Cav Archers are a threat, and he's going to commit towards Heavy Camel. Now, I... I guess it all depends how long-term Hera's thinking here. Uh, okay, that... That's sloppy from MBL. I guess he misclicked or patrolled into a stable or something. But, um, you know, I don't know if it's worth going heavy camel when you essentially have, well, you have less gold than your opponent, right? He still has thousands of gold remaining, so maybe it would be better to go for all the trash options like Hussar, um, Habadir, and Skirmisher, and then put your gold into Siege, like Rams and Trebs. I feel like Siege Ram is, is always something that you'll see... Like, something that Viper includes a lot in his post-imp comps to Siege Ram, right? A lot of pros do. Alright. 
So he's going heavy camel. Now, these cav archers once silk armor is in have a ton of armor. Okay, I remember now. The 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 second one is pierce armor. I got it wrong earlier. So second one's pierce armor, first one's melee armor. And these cav archers with full upgrades will end up having seven pierce armor. Which is sick. Which is sick. Yeah, first one's melee armor. So the Keshiks have one less melee armor. And the same pierce armor as a knight in Castle Age. Alright, here comes Hera with a treb. He wants to push this MBL. He has three on gold. Oh, he's raiding here? Now, he's getting gold income when he's raiding. Look at the gold income. That's because of the raiding with the Keshiks. They're probably not so good against camels. Now, MBL is going to get elite Keshiks. So, we're seeing all of the things from... We're seeing all the things. I love it. All the power of the Tatars. We know the power of Persians. Hera has 20 more vills. He's expanding that eco everywhere. Crazy economy. Heavy camel. Halberdier. We've seen it all before. But I... This was the first game I saw. What? Did that Treb just hit? Did you see that, YouTube? The Treb just hit that poor Cav Archer. That's hilarious. I mean, not for him and his family, but... um. But yeah, this is the first competitive game where I saw Elite Keshik and full Cav Archer. Now, they're not heavy Cav Archers yet. And uh, I believe he's still missing the final armor upgrade. I think they get the final armor upgrade on their CA. This is awkward. Uh, Duck Winters, Hustly, Rokia, Zale One, and Toe Jelly, and Crassius, and others. Uh, if you watch this on YouTube later, I... You guys were in my chat before I started my stream, and I'm sorry for being late. I'm not gonna tab out YouTube, so uh, it's gonna it's gonna be awkward for them. It's alright; they're they're used to it. I always say lower your expectations with me, and then you'll be happy. And I always I always I told every girl I've ever dated that as well. Just lower your expectations. Seems to work well. <laughs> So 70 military versus 60 military. Uh, we have close to ideal comp for Persians. I guess you could say, probably should have more range in here. It, you should probably have, um... Yeah, I like the Hussars. This is what Hera's known for. He's gonna spam some Hussars. Really should have hit that stone. But normally you'd have camels and, and maybe crossbows. And alright, here we have it. Now this, I don't know if it was intentional from Hera, but was huge. Because 16 Cav Archers got drawn away because of that one Hussar. And so, those elite Keshiks... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm dying. <coughs> elite Keshiks didn't have as much support. Oh man, that was bad. Sorry. But I think if there's one unit you keep alive and post him, it's the Cav Archers. And if there's one unit you can probably afford to create a few more of, it's the Keshik. Because they don't cost a lot of gold. It's only 40 gold. And you earn... You generate gold when you fight. Now, I'm going to speak to the devs about this. I, I know you're all curious right now, as MBL's fighting with these, how much gold income he's getting. I'm going to speak with the devs and get some clarifications on how the gold generated shows up with Tatars. Because I believe it does show up in the, um, in the earned gold statistic at the end of the game. Now, MBL has had this four tile gold, and Hera has not had an extra one. But MBL's barely collected this. He's maybe collected 800. Just things to keep in mind. Now, MBL has done this a few times now. He's trying to send a few units into the back of Hera's base. And that's how Hera's going to lose the game, potentially. Is if you hit that wooden farm eco. Hera loves to do this. Raid you, and then stabilize and keep his economy safe. He loves to do that. And that's what he's going to try and do. His cav archers are in so high a number now. 30, and also pushing up the hill. Good luck against the Tars. You see Thumb Ring now for Hera, and all of Hera's crossbows only cost wood. He's missing upgrades. He's missing Thumb Ring. Or, uh, he's getting that now. He's missing chemistry. It's a good game plan from Hera. Persians are just stupid. Their early eco is just stupid. Oh, by the way, did MBL find this gold? Nope! He didn't find the gold. Freaking MBL, man. Are you kidding me? There's four tiles of gold there! I guess it makes the game more fair. If he had that been collecting that gold, uh, Hera, I'd say he's at a disadvantage, surely, with the uh, with the map, but it's not huge if MBL doesn't find that gold. 
Also, getting the extra relic helps. Did Hera still not see this? Oh, he sees it. Oh, he's on the way to get it. Nice. And there were three tiles of stone here earlier, and this was an area that was so exposed. And Hera just now hit it. So that's that's an extra castle for MBL, essentially. Now, I we've seen the Keshiks. We have seen the Cav Archers. We've seen Halbs. There's nothing special about Tatar Halberdiers. Now we're going to see the Tatar Hussars. So if the Persian player is going for the crazy crossbow production, uh, it's, it is successful because of the cost, right? It doesn't cost any gold. And it's more effective than a skirmisher in many ways. But if Hussars start coming out that have silk armor, seven pierce armor, it could be really, really strong. And finally, Ring Archer armor is on the way for MBL. He really should have gotten that one a while ago. Hera has tons of food. Again, 70 plus farmers. So common with Hera to see that. I think that's one way that a lot of top 20 players can improve their gameplay. Okay, actually, I said I wasn't going to say anything. As we watch this fight, I'm going to pull up my phone and say in my chat that I'll be like 10 minutes late. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help it. I don't want to upset people. But look at the stats on the CA. 7 pierce armor. So crossbows are doing one damage against them and then the hussars are going to start coming out and i'll show you those in just a moment bear with me here recording youtube video be there soon i'm such an idiot man okay so hera he's having a few problems now he lost his trap he lost his momentum also mbl started to raid him there's a hussar two plus five that's nuts. That is crazy. Seven Pierce Armor. And MBL slowly starting to chip away. He has this big push here. Hera needs to address it. Hera has so much food, so much wood. But Tatars in late game are sickening. They are sickening. A big thing for MBL, I'd say, is just still be very, very... Um, be very cautious of losing any cab archers. It's hard to lose them, but you can still lose them. So, just be careful. I love the halbs in front, and I love how he's starting to raid on the sides with the hussars. I love how he's also nerfing himself and hasn't found that fortile gold in the left. The only thing that we're really missing here is the flaming camels, and you better believe it. I was in MBL's Twitch chat spamming flaming camel. I think I had other people in on it as well. Now, he could research Tamarid Siegecraft. I think it's 500 gold, 400 wood. That also gives extra range to your trebs. Uh, and Flaming Camels would be decent against Hussars, but... I think MBL, he sees the scores close, and he he still knows that Persians are strong, and, and he knows Hera's reputation. So I, it's probably wiser to research Heavy Cav Archer, which is now on the way. Let's make these Cav Archers even tankier. Hera comes over here for wood. He's going to have wood problems soon. I guess he has wood back here, but Hera does not have any map control. Like, there was maybe one instance where he started to raid, but he didn't make a single, single attempt to raid down here with Hussars this entire game, and he was trying to push this area. I think he got a little bit tunnel visioned because he knew he needed gold. And there's a pointy boy poking villagers. That will hurt Hera. Now Hera, just, you just can't fight this army from Tatars. It's insane. You just can't fight it. it it's, it's, it's so good. Think, like any death ball civilization, Tatars are going to be really hard to stop once they get here. The beauty of it, though, is that they're also really fast. It's a bit like Mongols, I guess you could say, with their, their Mangadai and their Hussars. Mangadai are still better than these Cav Archers, but the Cav Archers are really tanky. Okay, I, instead of YouTube, I said TT, and someone said I'm making a video about titties. That, that will be next week, YouTube. Sorry. What can Hera do except stabilize? And, and I guess can MBL finally push this? I think what he's really missing is some siege. I, I have to say props to Hera, who's now bringing skirms into the mix. He has more population still. Sign of a good player is a player that just won't go away. I always say it about MBL, actually. I call MBL the cockroach. 
I think what MBL's missing is just more Hustlers in front, right? Because it's the Skirms and the Crossbows that are still giving him some problems. So if he gets his higher Pierce Armor Hussars an equal number to Hera's Hussars, it may, might make more sense. And also there's something that MBL's doing where he's maintaining 125 Villagers so he can maintain more Eco as he slowly raids Hera. So uh, he's not going to be able to kill right now, but if he maintains 125 Villagers and then Hera goes down to below 100, Hera's wood and food count's going to slowly... Uh, be used for military units that are dying. Tatars almost reminds me of, of like, a hun like Britons. Very hard to push, but very difficult to push with in many ways. Oh, wow, nice house wall from Hera. He saw the Keshiks coming in. The ultimate raiding unit, right? Because they might die pretty quickly to other units. But if you raid with them, you're getting gold. All right, MBL, 31 Cav Archers needs to pull them back. Again, I think just lacking the the Hussar numbers in front. Yeah, there we go. Regroups, re-patrols, and is uh, taking some fights here and earning gold while he does it. I like it. I like the concept of the Keshik. I really like the concept. And I also like how we've seen all the strengths. We've seen the situations where the Tatars can do well. Hera's completely out of gold now. He uh, used to be at 70 farmers. He's lost quite a few. But he still has enough to sustain production for the most part. But here you go. Now, Tatars don't get Siege Ram. Uh, but they do get Capped Ram. And this is the way to do it. I think Hera's realizing now... My trash isn't doing it. The trash bows almost... They seem to contribute nothing. Uh, my ranges are going to go down. My barracks will go down, and then he'll slowly start losing. He could even lose his monastery. He is going to add in siege ramps, which is a great move. Now, I think a top tier play from MBL would be, while he's pushing here, send in units on the other side. Oh, he needs to defend here. Hera's hoping that he can hit MBL on this side. Yeah, we have Keshiks defending and Halb, so that will be enough. And what's really cool about having Keshiks is as they attack the ram, it takes a while to kill that, right? So you earn more gold. It's more hits, and, and you get uh, gold every time you, you hit. So yeah, sending rams versus the Tatars is, is like gifting them gold. <laughs> it's amazing. It's three relics to three, remember that. It's still a nightmare to push up this hill if you're MBL. Hera just won't die. It's Aftermath players, and they're cockroaching. He refused to go down, but the spam from MBL is insane. It's a mix of all units. Cav Archers have always been upwards of 30. And now he's going to send in Keshix on this side. He can afford more Keshix because of fighting those Rams with Keshix. And just get them get them into that back eco. Hero's actually at the point now where he's he's pretty much out of wood, too. Now he has wood in the bank, but he only has this to chop. The 4,000 wood will disappear a lot faster than you think. Ahara's now at 50 military. It's 83 for MBL. I want to show you the Cav Archer HP as they get attacked. Well, never mind. GG! MBL wins! Hera expected the Cav Archers in the Castle Age. He committed to two archery ranges. He started to make skirms. And when when the meta is is uh is set, right? When, when one Civ always does the same thing, then you can do that, but that is not the Tatars, and that caught Hera off guard. I really think that that's what hurt Hera the most in this game. Uh, apart from, you know, the gold situation, which wasn't that big a deal. It was, um, ended up being 3,500 gold that MBL had over Hera. <clears throat> Wait, am I doing the math correctly there? 8 times 800 times 4 is uh, 4,200. And then there's about 500 here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 3,500 gold is what MBL collected because of um, having the extra one. But no, he didn't even take this one. <clears throat> uh, and then you have the Keshiks and then you have the Relics. But uh, I, I love the switch there from MBL. I, I loved the use of all the strengths of Tatars. And I think Tatars are going to be a fun Civ to see in the future. Let's bring up the achievements here. That was an hour? For some reason, I don't expect I didn't expect that game to be that long, even though I watched the whole thing. 
660 kills for MBL. That's pretty beastly, though it is also kind of understandable because Hera, uh, he made a lot of trash units, right? And it was very difficult for him to kill what MBL was making. So this is what I wanted to bring up. So 17, oh, let's call it 18,000 gold against 12,000 gold. So there's a 5,000 gold difference. Wait, is that correct? 6,000. <laughs> the spirit of the law, I need you. Gold difference. And MBL collected 3,500, I think maybe 3,700 gold more on the map. The relic golds? Okay, that contributed 300. But I think it could come down to selling at the market, which you would think Harry would have more potential to do because of the uh, food and wood. And also the Keshiks. I think fighting with the Keshiks gave MBL more gold. It's pretty sick stuff. I like it. Now, Hera wasn't the luckiest with the map, and Acropolis can do that to you, but I hope you guys enjoyed this game. And if you want to see more Tatars, or actually, here's something. If you want to see something in general as far as content goes in the near future, let me know. I've been sending out messages to long-term supporters on my stream because I'm creating a new series which is going to be more for people who are not quite low ELO legends, but they're not quite experts and they're kind of in the middle. But I want to hear your thoughts, YouTube, on what you would like to see in the Age of Empires 2 community, whether that's a collab, you want me to collab with someone, uh, or a series, or just a commentary on a certain civilization. Uh, I have people waiting on me because I am a noob streamer, and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you next time.